So this week we are moving from microevolution and talking about macroevolution. So let's just review real quick the basis of any change to a population over time. So all living things have DNA. And of course, DNA is like your recipe book that carries all of the different recipes for all the different proteins that make you up, right? So it's made up of genes that code for those proteins. And those genes that are in your DNA get passed on to offspring and they're passed on through generations. But one version of a gene, one allele, might be a little bit better than another one in terms of its ability to help you survive and reproduce. So if one allele gives individuals a survival advantage or a reproductive advantage, then that allele is going to increase in the population as it is passed on more, right? So that over time, the frequency of the alleles might change and the overall population might change. Now. If those changes to the DNA occur in two separated populations over a long enough period of time, then what we call speciation might occur. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what speciation is. All right, so speciation is the process of one species diverging into two species. It is the term that is used to describe the formation of a new species. So what is a species? Is a lion the same species as a tiger? Species just means an organism that can interbreed, meaning say the lion and the tiger, bred, had sex, reproduced, and a species, then that means if organisms are in the same species, it means that their offspring would also be able to be reproductive. So they would have fertile offspring. Now lions and tigers actually can make babies together. We call those babies the ligers, right, of the world. But ligers cannot then have offspring. They are infertile. So that means lions and tigers are not the same species. All right, so nope, not the same species. Horses and donkeys are another example of this where they can have sex and create a baby, a mule, but that mule cannot then have more babies. And this is in part due to all of the different DNA differences that the populations have. They actually don't have the same number of chromosomes, which means when the mule has an odd number of chromosomes, that mule during meiosis, the chromosomes aren't going to separate evenly. It just won't work to have babies further. So how does speciation occur? Well, the number one type of speciation, it would be geographic isolation causing speciation. We call this type allopatric speciation, but it basically just means that populations are separated by some sort of geographic feature. Maybe it's a river or a mountain range, maybe it's the ocean or a desert. And because of that separation, they have no ability to mate and share DNA, so the changes in the DNA and their populations build up over time. So in the Galapagos Islands, this is a key example of geographic isolation, because different populations of birds were isolated on different islands with slightly different environmental conditions. Because of that, there were different selective pressures on that population of bird, and they developed different traits over time. So some finches on one island, maybe there were large seeds available and the finches developed beaks that could eat the large seeds, whereas on other islands they developed different qualities for different um, environments or different food sources. All right. Now, the second type of ice, um, speciation is speciation caused by behavioral isolation. And behavioral isolation can be because two different populations start having slightly different mating behavior. And because of that, they stop mating with each other. For example, if two populations of birds start having a slightly different song or dance, they might not find each other attractive and they might not mate and therefore they wouldn't share their DNA. Um, it could also be behaviorally due to time if some Populations start to be more active during the day and other population is more active at night. They might not interact and mate. Um, or for example, if some individuals are inhabiting a different food source or locating themselves in a different area of the habitat, those populations would not necessarily interact. So here's an example of behavioral isolation. 
Blue-footed boobies select their mates only after this elaborate courtship ritual and dance. And if you don't do the dance, then you're not going to get a mate. And if you don't get a mate, your DNA is not shared. And therefore, those populations might separate. Here's an example of the competition or the niche one, where these different types of birds, literally same tree, but they inhabit different areas of the tree, elevation-wise. Okay, so the Cape May warbler feeds the tips of the branches near the top of the tree. This other warbler feeds in the middle part of the tree, and the yellow rumped warbler actually feeds at the base of the tree. And just because of that difference in space, they aren't gonna interact as much. So that is really it today. I'm gonna have you look at some examples of speciation so that you can determine the types of isolation that might have led to speciation in those different examples. All right, that's it.